no matter what type of analytics that you're doing or how much data that you're using, analytics typically falls into one of four major categories. Today, we're gonna look at those four types of analytics. Hi, I'm Jen. I help people build analytics skills and careers with new videos every single week. Check out the description for additional analytics resources. Analytics is a really broad term. It covers a wide variety of detailed levels and data volumes. But no matter what type of analytics you're performing and what you're trying to achieve, you can usually categorize it one of four ways. You're typically going to want to either describe, diagnose, predict, or prescribe. These four types of analytics build off of each other. These four stages of analytics, describing, diagnosing, predicting, and prescribing, will feel very familiar if you've ever been to the doctor because you weren't feeling well. Let's look at what that might look like. You went to bed last night feeling fine, but you woke up this morning feeling anything but fine. Maybe you're a little achy and you have some chills. You suspect you might have a fever, so you take your temperature and find that it's a few degrees higher than normal. At this point, you've described what's happening, and now maybe you make the decision to go to the doctor to get checked out. Once there, the doctor asks you questions, which go over the described process again. They might even recollect information. They'll probably take your temperature themselves to check it, and they might check your heart rate and your blood pressure at the same time. Now, they move on to trying to figure out what this means. Based on all your symptoms, the doctor diagnoses that you most likely have the flu. You might be given a rapid flu test, but that often doesn't change what the treatment is. At this point, we've reached the diagnostic stage. Now, what happens if you don't do anything? Many people feel miserable for a few days, but then recover just fine from the flu on their own. But maybe there's underlying health problems or other risk factors that make it more likely that you won't recover as easily. The doctor talks with you and checks your medical records and finds there's nothing that makes you especially vulnerable. So at this point, they predict that with rest and some time, you'll feel better on your own. At this point, a prediction has been made that you'll be fine without any additional medical treatment. The doctor then sends you home with instructions to rest, drink plenty of fluids, and to take an over-the-counter pain reliever if the aches get to be bothersome. At this point, you have a prescription. You've been prescribed rest, fluids, and over-the-counter pain reliever if necessary. This is how you optimize the improvement. Will you get better even if you don't do these things? Most likely but this will help it go faster and for you to feel better as you're getting healthy again. With this, we've just gone through these four stages of analytics. We can use this exact same process to work through a problem and stop along the way wherever we need to reach. Sometimes the only thing we're trying to accomplish is to describe what's happening. Other times we need to predict what's going to happen or prescribe what will happen in the future. Using the analogy of visiting the doctor, if you woke up today and felt fine, there's really no need to go on and diagnose, predict, and prescribe. You feel fine, everything feels normal, so the added value of doing those additional stages is minimal, and the actual work is minimal as well, because we would assume that if we feel okay, that everything's going to be continuing to occur, we're gonna continue to feel like we have felt, unless we have some other information. From a data and information standpoint, here's what those four types of analytics look like. At the most basic level, we can produce regular canned reports that tell us what happened within the business. At this point, we're really just answering what happened. Or maybe we've gone a step further and we've produced ad hoc reports that go into more depth on how many, when, and where. Both of these are descriptive analytics. They provide basic expository information what, when, how many, how much. At the next level, we start to query and drill down into our information further. We not only want to understand what happens, we want to know why that it happened. 
You also might create indicators or flags to notify you when this thing that you're studying occurs again in the future. When you do that, you're asking, where do we look? Both of these are diagnostic analytics. Diagnostic analytics are really focused on why something happened and how we're gonna know if it's happening again. Both descriptive and diagnostic analytics focus on the past. It's all about what happened before the current point in time. Now we start to look towards the future when we get into predictive analytics and then prescriptive analytics. Predictive analytics help you understand what variables are at play, how they relate to each other, and any correlation that might be present. They really start to help you understand what happens in the future, assuming that we change nothing. From an analytics standpoint, we focus on statistical modeling and then move on to predictive modeling. Assuming that nothing changes, what does the future hold? In some cases, we might want to change what the future holds. In that case, we're moving into prescriptive analytics. Prescriptive analytics often starts with random testing. What if we just try this? And then it moves on to optimization. What's the best course forward? What actions should we take? In prescriptive analytics, we're trying to predict the future based on changes to what's happened in the past. I mentioned that these four types of analytics build off of each other. If you want to predict what's going to happen in the future, you have to start with describing and then diagnosing. If you jump straight to predicting, your prediction's likely not going to be very accurate or not more accurate than random chance would allow. For this reason, make sure you take time if you're predicting to also understand in detail what happened and why it happened. That's the only way to really understand what's going to happen going forward. The same thing with prescriptive analytics. People often want to jump straight there because they want to make changes or they assume they know what happened. But if you don't take the time to understand what really happened and why it happened and predicting what happens if nothing changes, then your prescription is likely to not be incredibly effective. You're going to miss out on key factors that you should have accounted for because you didn't take time to study the past correctly. Like I mentioned, this doesn't always have to be a long process. If you woke up feeling fine this morning, then you could run through the entire process end to end in a matter of a few seconds. You would describe that everything feels normal or like you're used to. You would diagnose that everything's okay, uh, predict that it will continue to be fine, and prescribe that you keep doing what you've been doing. Even when something's wrong, this process can go quite quickly. If you woke up this morning and you had a headache, you might describe that you have a pressure in your head, you would diagnose that it's a headache, you would predict that mm, overall you don't feel too bad and so you'll probably be fine throughout the day and then you'll prescribe that you either tolerate it without doing anything or you take some specific actions that you know have helped you mitigate headaches in the past. All of that could probably happen in five to 10 seconds at most. Usually any analytics activity will be pretty clear from the start what stage that you need to reach. You'll know whether you just need to describe, whether you need to diagnose and explain the why, or whether you need to predict or prescribe what to do in the future. And with that, we've covered descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. If you have questions about the different types or where something falls on that spectrum of analytics, leave it in the comments below and I'd be happy to give you an answer. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you back here next week.